All the cars I have owned, and I am currently 19 years old. My very first vehicle is a 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee, or otherwise known as the Jeep WJ. But first, let's go back to how I even got that. When I was 14 or 15 years old, my mom bought me this yellow Can-Am ATV. It was a lot of fun, but it quickly got too small for me. I just outgrew it pretty quick. We just got kind of a smaller one, so it didn't really last me very long. I sold the uh, ATV to buy a car because I was turning 16 soon, but since it was still technically, since my mom had bought it for me, it was still technically her money, so she got to choose what I got, and I actually didn't even get to go look at it. They thought I was going to fall in love with something and not turn it down, even if it was like, or just be, even if it was a bad deal. So my mom brought home this 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee Jeep WJ, never even got to look at it. And it had about 186,000 miles on it when I had it. It had a few little issues that we got fixed up pretty quick. It only cost us about $400, $500 to get all the little initial stuff fixed. I quickly hit 200,000 miles on this Jeep. And it was running pretty good actually for a while. had these 32 inch tires in the back of our house just kind of laying around and uh, they happened to fit my rim but when we tried to put them on the Jeep it, it rubbed way too much so we went and got a uh, I think it was a two inch lift for like $104 off eBay and this is what it looks like compared to a stock WJ. I installed a two 12 inch subs with a, 50, or a 1200 watt Hyphonics Zeus amp. I painted the grill black. Then I got new headlights and a new front bumper, and I love taking pictures. I have bunches of pictures of all my vehicles. And then I painted the wheels black, and this is kind of when I really got into off-roading. I started taking on more and more off-roading trips, as you can see in these pictures. I mean, I wouldn't really consider them all out off-roading, but you know, at least I was taking them on dirt roads and stuff every now and then. Oh, and playing in the snow was a lot of fun. This is a pretty famous trip of me and my friends that we all took. Um, it was sometime during the summer, but we all finally had our trucks and like we just started driving and we all thought we were cool. So we all went out to this desert nearby our house and uh, we were just out there trail riding for a while. And my Jeep did great the entire time. It did like phenomenal. I couldn't ask anything more of it. And on the way back, we were coming up this hill. It wasn't even like an incline. Like it was a little bit of an incline, but not really. And when I get up to the top of it, it just starts, it just dies on me. Just completely dies in the, odometer just starts flashing all these engine codes at me tell me what's wrong and I saved them real quick on my phone Went off to the side tried to restart it and I finally got it started again and I started driving back home and I could only be in I could only go to second gear it could go first second and then I couldn't go into third I don't know what was going on like well, at least that's what I thought was the issue was I thought the transmission was going out which it had already previously gone out on me so we had to replace that at one point as well so I thought the transmission was broken again but when I got home I checked the engine codes and it was actually cylinder 4 was misfiring it was only a 6 cylinder Jeep but cylinder 4 was misfiring so I just took off or I took out all the spark plugs checked them and I did all that kind of stuff put it all back together and it ran fine after that then I actually sold the Jeep for $4,700, and honestly that was a steal, because as I noted before, I only bought the thing for 2000 or my mom had bought it for $2,200. So, compared to like what I bought it for and then what I sold it for, I made a lot of money off this Jeep. I probably only put maybe a grand into parts and stuff like that, but I definitely made money off this Jeep. Then I bought a 2008 Scion TC. I really wanted something more reliable. The Jeep didn't give me issues, so I really wanted something more reliable. I've always liked the looks of Scion, so I kind of went that route. I actually got really lucky with this. This one I mean it only had 114,000 miles on it and it was five thousand dollars that's pretty cheap it wasn't a little bit of rough condition it had a broken front bumper taillights were cracked back bumper was cracked it had a big dent on it but I mean it was, it was in good shape mechanically so I wasn't really too worried about all that stuff I knew I could fix all that later but yeah the first thing that I changed out was the taillights so you can see there's the old ones and then it had this old uh, that piece had to be duct taped on and then I went ahead and painted the interior white and then I painted the wheels black and then I got some fancy glow gauges for the interior. Uh, 
cuts that I put in, and you can also see the dent within the uh, bumper there, in the quarter panel there. And then funny story is I got this brand new front bumper put on. The, the, I put it on like late one night. I went cruising around because I finally got it fixed because it was like a big chunk missing out of the front bumper originally. And the very next day I'm on my way to work and it was just a, kind of one of those weird situations but it was my fault. I T-boned somebody in the back end of their vehicle as an SUV. Ruined my front bumper that I just got painted, just got put on. I got new headlights put on it. I got this fancy little Scion logo up there. I got new fog lights in it. I don't think they're in any of these pictures, but this is kind of what it looked like when I was finished with it. And then I started taking it to car meets and stuff a lot more, and that really kind of got me into the car scene. Before I was kind of just in the Jeep scene, didn't really go into the car scene. This is actually as fast as the car would go, 122.5 is Snapchat says, but it looks like I'm actually just going like 121-ish. Um, it said the governor stopped at 127, but I can never get there. I got a uh, text message. I put this car up on Craigslist. I was kind of done with it. I wanted something a little faster. I wasn't really enjoying the car as much. I mean, it's just a four-cylinder front-wheel drive, and I hated front-wheel drive. So I really wanted to get rid of it. But I put this up on Craigslist, and uh, this person messaged me and said, are you taking any trades? And I was like, no, I'm not taking any trades. But then I was like, kind of like, mm, maybe I have something good. So I was like, whatever. But I mean, what do you have to offer? And he sends back a 1990 Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo. And I like, just kind of laughed. I, I took screenshots, sent it to all my friends. We were all laughing about it. I thought it was a scam. And I messaged him back, just like, see how far they would take it. And I was like, all right, let me see some pictures. And I get like four or five different pictures come, come back. And I was like, okay, like maybe this guy's serious. Like what the heck? And I was like, so are you thinking like a straight across trade or what? And he's like, well, I don't have any cash, but I do have another vehicle. And I was like, another vehicle? And he's like, yeah, I have a 98 Subaru Outback Sport. It's in really rough condition, but I mean, I'll throw it in the deal just because. And I was like, so you are talking to both the 300ZX Subaru for just the sign. I don't pay anything. He's like, yeah. I was like, what the heck? So the dude lived like two or three hours away from where I lived. So me and my buddy, we drive out there. You look at the car, I fell in love with it, even though it ran like shit, it was just not that great of a car, but I mean, it was a JDM Turbo 1990, it was my dream car. Of course I wanted the thing. We went and looked at it the first day, I didn't even bring the title the first day, because I didn't actually think I was going to do this, like, I didn't want to, like, make a bad decision, I guess, so I didn't take the title with me the first day, he was kind of upset about that, actually. But I think the very next day, or the day after that, we went back, traded titles, got everything signed over, and the car was mine. Funny thing about this car though is when I first got it, I thought it was fast, you know, twin turbo made a lot of boost noises and everything. But it was actually only running on four cylinders because the ignition coils, not the actual coils themselves, the wiring to the coils was uh, messed up, it was burnt out, or it was mid, like, you could literally look at it and it was frayed and like all, like, it was just nasty. Some of it had electrical tape on it, like it was just done really badly. So I fixed one pretty quickly, I just had to rewire it a little bit, I just cut them, cut them back and then rewired them. But the second one, or the other one, was the whole entire wire, somewhere in between the uh, a PCM and the actual ignition coil. Somewhere in between there it was just frayed or like it was whatever happened to it, it was burnt out. So I had to replace the whole entire piece. So I just kind of bypassed the whole thing. I went straight from the PCM up to the ignition coil and I just kind of followed the original wiring and I kind of tucked it in with that. But I mean that ran me on six cylinders after that. It was like adding free horsepower. Then I got these new exhausts. I didn't expect them to be this big. I really didn't want to go that big, but they were, I think, a four inch tip and then the rest of it was a five inch, but I thought they looked great on the car. actually in really good condition there was a couple little things that I was kind of you know iffy about but I mean the interior overall was in really good condition the car itself had a brand new paint job but there was two fenders that were carbon fiber and he sticker bombed one of them 
which I hated, I really wanted to get rid of, but I didn't really have the money at the time. That's another issue is why I shouldn't have bought this car quite yet, but it was whatever. I did have big plans for this car. Um, I had the, I had messaged, uh, I think it was, I'm trying to remember what the Z shop is called, it's in California. I'll link it down in the description, I'll remember it eventually, but it was a shop down in California and they did all kinds of, they did Z only type stuff. It's not Z1 Motorsports though. I can't remember what they're called, but this is a list. I went and contacted them and told them like, I want all this stuff done and I want price for it. And they sent me this whole entire thing. They were a great shop. Again, I took a bunch of pictures of this car. So here's just some more random pictures that I took. what the lights look like at night and then I got this stereo which by the way is like a great stereo I can link this one down below too it has like the play store on it and everything like it's great you can get a Spotify on it it can connect to Wi-Fi I'm pretty sure you can get a thing that connects to 3G it's only like $270 so I'll link it down below as well shout out to uh, my friend Sean for showing me that stereo and then I started having issues with the car um, they were definitely there before I bought it. I mean, being a teenage me, I was hooning the car around, you know, I was drifting and doing donuts and burnouts and whatever, having fun. The transmission started slipping up on me, so I was like, you know, I'm just going to change the fluid. So I changed the fluid three or four times to get a full flush out of it, you know, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse, and eventually I just had to put it in the back of the house. It just was not movable anymore. Um, I could get, I could, it couldn't even get out of first gear. It could do reverse and first, and that was it, and it was not automatic, so. And, uh... Since it was my daily at the time, I didn't have anything else to drive, I had to go out and buy another car, and I was just going to get something cheap, because my plan was to keep the 300ZX forever. I mean, I was going to keep this car as my dream car. I was just going to keep building it and whatnot. But I really wanted something nice and reliable again, but I didn't want to, like, sacrifice for the front-wheel driveness, so I decided I was going to take out a loan. I got a $10,000 loan and bought this Nissan 350Z. This car only had 6,000 miles on it, and it was a one-owner garage cab. It was, like perfect like even the craigslist posting said it was immaculate and then i had to sell the 300 zx because i decided that i was going to move out to texas i used to live in colorado and the car wasn't movable and i didn't have a way to transport it down to texas there was no space in texas for it there was no space in colorado for it i didn't want to get in a storage unit just to hold it there and have the engine you know all the fluids and everything so up. like i know you can put it in restore mode and everything but i was moving pretty quickly it was kind of like a last minute it wasn't like a last minute but i didn't really have that much time and i honestly needed the money to move anyways so i had to sell it for super cheap because i was about to leave the guy that bought it said that he did have a, he has another 300 zx that the engine the engine had a bent valve in it so his plans for it were to take uh, the transmission out of his current one put it in mine and then use mine as his car like he's gonna take the good parts and put it into mine so i mean that car may be out there somewhere guys and then now of course i still have the 350z that is what i've kept since then and i actually do have some exciting plans for that i apologize for not posting uh, on the page as much lately but i am waiting for something on the 350z right now not like big but it's just you know it's it's big for me thanks for watching guys hope you guys enjoyed can't wait to see what other cars i own in my lifetime